So those were my overarching comments, but I'm now coming to the most pleasurable part of, of uh, this afternoon, as far as I'm concerned, because I'm going to present the Distinguished Alumni Award to Dr. Sarah Kueshi. This award is Cranfield Aerospace's highest honor, and it recognizes those people who have achieved success, success, significant success within their industry and their sector, whilst upholding the highest standards in business practice. Now, I've been privileged to read a fantastic citation that's been provided for me by Professor Perry Polides. Uh, Perry is undoubtedly rightly proud of Sarah's achievements. That pride is infectious. And I have to say that I am very proud to be able to stand here, Sarah, today and to present you with your award. To our colleagues who are joining, Sarah uh, did the MSc research in the School of Engineering in 2008. She returned to do a PhD in Cranfield Aerospace in 2016. And she's now the chief executive and co-founder of Aero Engine Craft Private Limited. She's also a visiting academic within the school. And it really is extraordinary to read of her achievements uh, through that citation of Professor Polides. Clearly, Sarah's research is leading the way in developing contrail-free aero engines. Uh, I'm absolutely sure that this type of applied research is what makes Cranfield and our School um, of Aerospace Transport and Manufacturing really stand out from other universities. But actually, Sarah has done so much more uh, than just her research. We're going to hear a bit about her research and a PhD shortly when she gives the keynote lecture. But before that, let me say that beyond that, Sarah is a fantastic role model, both as a female engineer, she's clearly a fantastic a trailblazer for women in STEM. And she's also a, a, an inspiration for women leaders in aerospace around the globe. She's regularly featured in the media. She's a prominent voice on sustainable aviation. And she gives very much of her time in supporting our ongoing work at Cranfield. You might wonder whether she has time for everything else, for anything else. I'm sure she does, but even in her spare time, she's managed to get a private pilot's license. And while she was at Cranfield, she learned acrobatic flying. What a, an opportunity seized. What a platform for the future. So colleagues, friends, it's my huge privilege to be able to present Sarah with the Distinguished Alumni Award for Aerospace. Sarah, please receive this certificate with huge congratulations from all of us. And perhaps you'd like to a moment or two of reflection yourself before we come to your lecture. Sarah, well done on all of our behalf. Okay, um, thank you very much, uh, Sir Peter Gregson. I'm indeed uh, overwhelmed with your words. And uh, Cranfield University is my pride, and it's an honor for me to receive this award. Uh, my grateful acknowledgments for my family, my friends, and my colleagues, since success is always teamwork. I would like to dedicate this award to my PhD supervisor, Professor Pericolis Pelidis, for his exceptional contributions towards my professional journey at Cranfield University. One of his unique quality is his faith in his students and the freedom of research that he allows them. My relationship with Cranfield University is 13 years long. I came to Cranfield as a young girl in 2007, and ever since then, Cranfield has made me grow. 
My first introduction to Cranfield was through Professor James Whitburn, my MRS supervisor, who welcomed me very warmly and launched me on a successful academic route at Cranfield University. During my MRS, I contributed to the Cranfield community as the general secretary of the Cranfield Student Association. Meanwhile, I was also fortunate to learn acrobatic flying from Captain Richard Rogers in the Bulldog at the Cranfield Airport circuit. Since I was already a licensed pilot, Captain Rogers taught me all the aerobatic flying maneuvers, including the inverted spin, which very few pilots in the world have attempted. He taught me with a lot of interest and it was the most unique Cranfield experience. Soon after, I started my PhD with Professor Philidus at the Propulsion Center working under the research group on contrail suppression. Professor Riti Singh had laid the foundation of this group working on aviation contrail induced global warming in the atmosphere. He was the first one to work on the idea of extracting water from engine exhaust emissions. His work with his students and his dedication towards the cause laid the foundation of my research. So far, two PhD theses and nine master's theses have been published in this domain under the supervision of Professor Singh and Professor Philidis. Out of these, I co-supervised five of these MSc theses during my PhD research. Owing to some challenging personal circumstances and the birth of my baby daughter, I carried out a part of my research in my home country where I was helped by my father, who is a very experienced scientist. The research resulted in two inventions that were granted as patents to him. I further research on these inventions towards the grant of a PhD degree. My supervisor Perry highlighted that this work holds commercial promise and global impact. It won a student prize for the Monaco Clean Equity Conference and I represented Cranfield alongside my colleagues from the Research Innovation Office at the conference. The exposure led me to the decision to take my research beyond the academic environment towards commercialization. After graduating from my PhD, I returned to Pakistan and along with my father, I co-founded Pakistan's first aerospace and engine R&D company in order to convert this research into an environment-friendly commercial product for the global aviation industry. I was able to secure uh, seed money from Department of International Development UK to launch the company where we are now building the prototype of the technology. Meanwhile, I'm also involved with my research group at Cranfield in the capacity of a visiting academic. The product is a contrail-free aero engine designed to reduce aviation-induced global warming due to non-carbon emissions. Aviation emissions are divided into two categories, carbon emissions and non-carbon emissions. Carbon emissions mostly comprise of carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide is a phenomenon which is common to both the ground and the air, and it has a very wide spectrum of industrial contributors. So there is a fairly good understanding of carbon dioxide and its contribution, as well as methods to mitigate it and to reduce carbon emissions, both on ground as well as in the air. A lot of solutions have been developed for ground-based industries to reduce carbon dioxide and are now being in some way transposed into the air to reduce carbon emissions. The combustion byproducts of any hydrocarbon fuel burn are water vapor and carbon dioxide, and water vapor is therefore one of the abundant non-carbon emission. Since water vapor has a variable residence time and lower residence time as compared to carbon dioxide, on the ground it is recycled quickly and does not contribute to global warming. However, at high altitudes, this water vapor acts as a greenhouse gas and also forms contrails and therefore has a major role in contribution to global warming. In that context, we can say that the global warming contribution of water vapor is a phenomena which is specific to the aviation industry and therefore the level of understanding on it is limited. Hence, it is a crucial to talk about topic, which is one of the roles that I have undertaken along with the development of the technology itself. More technical details shall be covered in the lecture. As a brief introduction, I would like to show you a small profile video for my journey at Cranfield and beyond Cranfield. Thank you.
Okay. Um, <laughs> challenging when you talk about um, radical technologies or disruptive technologies they're not very well received it's very difficult to convince uh, people to look at it from a different perspective I see a lot of activists who are just focused on the climate change on the ground and we uh, I think we all need to look up into the sky it has its repercussions on the earth and it is the Earth's atmosphere that is at risk. They are both greenhouse gases. Mm. They both contribute to global warming. And these uh, jo jo water vapors, when you are in the sun, because there is a lot of water in the sun, so this becomes a very small wind. If, for example, they say no contrails from tomorrow, uh, I mean, that's not a solution. You, nobody can stop flying. Planes have to fly. So there has to be an alternate or there has to be a, a backup technology that says that, yes, we have a solution to this uh, problem. And if there's a regulation that uh, makes um, if the aviation industry comply to these standards, we would be supporting that. Uh, I'm Dr. Sara Qureshi, CEO and founder of Erwin Craft Private Limited. Uh, we are developing the next generation of environmentally safe aircraft engines for the world. And uh, my observation and my suggestion to you would be in the context of climate change as well as regulations. Uh, I believe that at present on the global front, all um, regulations and efforts towards climate change are focused on the ground and unfortunately we are neglecting the earth's atmosphere which is even a bigger threat to climate change than the ground because uh, you know there, there are no offsets in the atmosphere you cannot grow trees and there's a, a limitation to the uh, kind of technologies that could be transposed in the air so uh, the climate change due to aviation in the atmosphere is a is a looming threat and so far um, since I guess the aviation industry is so monopolized and so controlled we really don't have any regulation or um, you know by any of the international bodies on climate change uh, including the UN so I would request you to look deeper into this matter and it has to be uh, you know done on an urgent basis thank you Thank you very much. Okay, so over to you, sir. Well, I want to thank this last intervention because it was the only one that really gave a suggestion and a, a very valid one. Thank you very much. I'm sure we'd all like to congratulate Sarah again on her award.